Father Eris. Ma'am. Hi. <laughs> we are so blessed that you are here today, and we aren't making you work or anything, because we really love you and we want to honor you as well for what you have done. When uh, we first uh, got to know Father Eris, we were literally wandering in the desert. Right? Am I right? Yes. 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 We had no priest. Uh, we were bitter against each other, squabbling. We were, our priories were all upside down, wrong. And uh, we reached out and Father Eris started visiting us once a month which is a huge, huge undertaking and sacrifice for him. And he started working with us. We had our workshops. Do you remember the workshops? Mm -hmm. We set priorities. We stopped all our squabbling and gossiping. We, we <laughs> learned from him on how to be better Christians. He got us involved in small groups, and that grew and grew and grew, which was totally amazing. We had great food, but we really had some wonderful times with Father. And it, I credit him with where we are today as far as enabling us to have a, a new, our own priest full-time, to uh, be very Christian-centered and focused on Christ and, and where we are going in our life. Uh, he was bedrock for us in helping us to develop that. And uh, the, the only better thing is that Father Yen then stepped into the picture and sort of carried that even further. But that didn't mean Father Eris stopped. He was there as a mentor. He still would visit. He would still help us. He was still behind us as far as moving us along and mentoring us every step of the way. And we love you for that. And we are so grateful. And so we'd like to present you with small token, this icon. I know you hardly have any, so <laughs> And thank you from the bottom of our hearts for everything you have done. I, I do have a number of icons. This will be a very special one. Um, that, and uh, she all kind of blindsided me because I thought this was going to be all about Charles, but thank you very much. I'm really appreciative of what you had to say, Mary, and, and uh, um, it, it's been an honor to work with you. I'm not going anywhere. It's like I'm, I'm not retiring for at least a dozen years, hopefully, but uh, um, I, I actually heard somebody recent, uh, recently say that when you leave a church, uh, you either... Uh, Carried out, walk out, or kicked out. So, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> when the time comes, hopefully I'll walk out. I'll be prepared to be carried out too. Um, but uh, uh, I did want to use this opportunity to, uh, in, to kind of hold up Charles as an example of, of uh, how things get done and how we can keep moving things forward. And, uh, and I, by the way, I like honoring people while they're still in good health and alive because. <laughs> Uh, very often, you know, we have these events for people when they, you know, we say all these things that they are uh, macaria, and by then it's too late. Um, but if we think about uh, uh, Christian vocation, uh, and you know, vocation isn't just uh, being called to the priesthood; it's our calling. It's our calling to be Christians first in life. Uh, we just had the feast of Saint Demetrius. And you know, that's what he's known for is, uh, while he was a successful officer, he was a Christian first and a, and a, and a real evangelist. Uh, and uh, so I, you know, that's the kind of person Charles has been, at least in the time, uh, the half dozen years or so I've known you all, he is, uh, he's a, a Christian first. Uh, and uh, he's reminded me that you get, you as a Christian, you should get better with age. I know about Yanni, you agree with that too. You can, we get better with age if we keep doing it right. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I even like your new hairdo, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm not joking. I like it. Don't change it. Um, he's uh, a man who puts, uh, puts the church first. Uh, I've shared with many of you before that uh, besides raising your families, the single most important thing you'll ever do in your life is move this church forward together. And so he's done that. Uh, 
I've never heard him say a bad word about anybody, which is way more than I can say about myself. Um, and that's a great example. Uh, he is uh, uh, an example of, of uh, uh, or I guess maybe I could say really kind of an analog for what the church in America is like, because Charles is Greek from Greece, but he knows we're in America. He loves his uh, Hellenic background, but he has an eye on the future. And that's exactly where the church is in the United States right now, uh, which is to say we can't deny our Greek roots, but we also know that God's not making a lot of new Greeks, and the ones he's making, he's not sending to America. And so Charles gets that, and so, but he really embodies both of those things without being without uh, selling either one short uh, or holding, holding back uh, the church for any selfish needs. Uh, and he's also a man that uh, understands traditional orthodoxy and modern orthodoxy. So you know that uh, he may or may not tell you, but whenever he goes to Greece, he goes to visit his spiritual father and uh, uh, has the opportunity to go to, go to confession there. And uh, so he's a man who loves uh, the worship of the church and, uh, but he also knows that we have to do things in a modern way, and uh, so, uh, which is why we're here. Uh, if you go to an Orthodox country, you're not going to see any stewardship luncheons or banquets. Uh, but this is how this is this is what we are in America. In America, we get the chance to really be the church because we're not dependent upon the government for our our uh, future and for our uh, our sustenance. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been very exciting then to see you all get a full time priest, and uh, uh, and I got to give you all some Romanian pronunciation lessons because it's like your father, you're like Father Ian, Father Jan, Father, or we should change your name, one of the two. <laughs> up to you, Father. No, it's up to you. It's your name. No, no, no. If uh, if you go to Siri, it's Ion, which I know that's definitely wrong, but Father Ion. Uh, uh, has been uh, uh, a real godsend for you all. And uh, unlike me, who uh, I think can be a little bit too unserious, uh, he's got a real sobriety and a real piety. And I think that's very attractive. Uh, and um, I'm glad he has that. And he has uh, helped to instill that. Uh, so, um, People frequently ask me what's the best part about being a priest, and uh, I get to see God at work every day when I go to work. Um, in people's lives, in, uh, in churches, in my own life. It's a privilege, it's a real blessing, and uh, God's at work here. Um, Holy Trinity in, in uh, San Francisco has gone through a bit of a renaissance in the past nine years as you all have, and people say, uh, what, uh, what's the secret? And I tell them the secret is you stay out of God's way. Uh, that's true with our own spiritual growth, right? Just stay out of God's way. Uh, he's trying to do great things in our life, so whatever. So as painful as, as, as this is to say, turn off the Steven Seagal movies. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> stay out of God's way. And in church life too, just stay out of God's way. Uh, it's so, it's, it's, uh, it's such a blessing that, and, and I mean just so exciting to see that there's no more infighting and carping and harping and pettiness. And uh, um, I wouldn't go around blaming anybody for that, just thank God that it's over and, and, and move beyond that. But that's what's happening here is, is everybody's just staying out of God's way. And so as long as y'all keep working and sacrificing, praying, uh, and staying out of God's way, we'll be able to, uh, to, per, to follow that calling for the parish. Uh, very often I will tell my, uh, uh, my teens, but especially the young adults at our church, that uh, intentionally churches are structured so that God's, God puts old people and young people together. You know, that's how it's supposed to be. The young people keep us invigorated, but uh, the old people have been there. The questions that young people face and are trying to answer, we've done that. We've figured them out, and that's a great thing. And so uh, uh, even, though, even though, Charles, uh, 
you're not quote unquote old, you are older than I am, and uh, I am uh, grateful for your example in, in my life. You've been a good example for me and I think for a lot of people in this room. And uh, if we're gonna really honor this man, then uh, be like him. And uh, don't say bad stuff and put the church first and uh, live your faith the way he has. It's a, it's a blessing to have you around. This is not like a retirement banquet. I know you're going to be around doing things for the church. Uh, you have to, you'll, and you have a beautiful priest and, and a beautiful community. So praise God for all of that. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the next chapter. Yeah, God bless you. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.